Hello, and thank you for joining us on information that's important to realtors, both buyers agents and sellers agents, when selling parcels in Florida. My name is Jennifer. I want to share some information on how the natural resources can impact development of parcels in both time and money. Whether you're a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, or both, a survey or ecological assessment allows you to leverage information in many ways. First of all, no one likes surprises. Finding a tortoise burrow or knowing the lot is in a scrub jay territory is not a deal breaker when everyone knows and understands what that impact is. On the seller's side, not only is everything properly disclosed, but you can assure the buyers that the price has been properly adjusted based on the assessment. A parcel with no protected species or wetlands will command a higher price than those with, and you can justify that price by having the survey already done. Further, the sale can be completed faster since less time is required for the ecological feasibility study. On the buyer's side, knowing what you're dealing with increases the confidence in your listing compared to other listings. So if your listing says ecological survey has been completed, they're going to then wonder about every other parcel they see listed that doesn't have that information. Well, what counts as protected species? There are 133 federal and state threatened or endangered animals and probably close to the same number of plants. Obviously, I'm not gonna cover them all. This is what you're most likely to run into locally, particularly the gopher tortoises, scrub jays, and wetlands. What does it mean if there are gopher tortoise burrows? Well, most residential parcels fall under the 10 or fewer burrows category. The costs for excavation and relocation under that permit can be as low as $1,800 or exceed $20,000. Knowing ahead of time is very important. The FWC regulations require a building permit application to be submitted to the city or county and a site plan that clearly shows that the tortoise burrows cannot be properly avoided. This means that they cannot be relocated for a clearing or mulching permit, nor can they be relocated as a condition of or prior to sale of a parcel. If the burrows are in the yard of a completed home, the burrows and tortoises are protected and cannot be relocated except under extenuating circumstances. Expected costs. This is a breakdown because just giving you a number doesn't necessarily mean anything until you see where that goes. My costs include the FWC authorized gopher tortoise agent survey, permitting and reporting, as well as excavation work. The FWC permit is included in the costs, as well as silt fencing. This isn't just tacked in with a, a standard hammer. This is trenched in and backfilled, and it is designed to exclude tortoises, both the ones from your parcel and neighboring, neighboring parcel, from coming into the lot during construction. It also includes the subcontractor excavation fees. He's based on a three-hour minimum, more if required, but that's only generally if we get up to that 10 borough mark. Scrub jays can also be considered a good way to make gopher tortoises look cheap. The Florida scrub jay is federally protected. The development or mitigation fees cover the destruction of the habitat of a federally protected species. That sounds expensive, and it is. Charlotte County has an agreement for the next 25 years or so with the U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife Service called the Habitat Conservation Plan. This identified appropriate habitat and all of the parcels in it and allows the county to handle the permitting, making it much faster and much cheaper than going directly to the U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife. The development fees are reasonable for single-family homes at $2,200 for a standard quarter-acre lot but they go up significantly. The three acre fees are about $12,800. And if you are between five and 20 acres, those fees jump up to $75,000. Plus parcels over three acres have additional requirements for preserve, preserving and maintaining the habitat. 
for any other county that does not have a habitat conservation plan, they fall under the U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife Umbrella Conservation Plan. First, there is a contact with U.S. Fish w, US Fisheries and Wildlife who determine if a review package or full survey is required. They base that decision on their database of confirmed J locations. A review package will cost about $500 for the evaluation and submission to U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife, while a full survey takes five days and will cost about $2,500. After the information is submitted to U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife, they either send a letter to the county that releases the parcel from any mitigation, or they inform the property owner or builder of the mitigation fees that are due. This can take up to a year. It is based on both parcel size and the specific meta population of jays that is impacted by the habitat destruction. In Northport, for example, these fees are $17,800 for a quarter acre plot. Burrowing owls. We do have some populations of burrowing owls in Charlotte County. There are none that I know of in Sarasota County. In Charlotte County, one population is down on Burnt Store Road near the county line, and there is another one south of South Gulf Cove. If the burrows cannot be avoided, they must be collapsed when there aren't any eggs or babies, and a starter burrow is then replaced after construction is completed. Again, once the home is completed, they make fairly decent neighbors and they're quite charming and fun to watch. Although bald eagles are no longer on the endangered species list, they are still protected in multiple ways. In Florida, different municipalities such as Cape Coral have more restrictions and in general, generally they're protected by the Federal Migratory Bird Act. You can expect increased restrictions on any activity within 660 feet of a nest. Under no circumstances, nesting season or otherwise, can a nest tree be cut down or destroyed without a federal incidental take permit. If construction must continue into nesting season, an approved management plan and monitoring will be required. Wetlands. There is a national wetlands inventory map that was created aerially in 1999, which means there are inaccuracies at ground level. Some areas that were identified as wetlands no longer qualify. Ditching canals, construction from 50 years ago has changed the hydrology significantly. The wetland boundary line is used by engineers when they create the site plan because there is a 25 foot wetland setback statewide that is required. Um, that site plan will then have the wetland and setback lines marked. Both of these parcels are wetlands. The one on the left is fairly obvious with the standing water. The one on the right is not unless you know exactly what to look for. The black stuff in the path up front is algal mat crusting that's broken up because it's dried out. The grasses in the foreground are needle rush, and some of the reddish, pinkish, bright green grass you see in the background is sea purslane. The short bushes in the center are actually white mangroves. The taller trees in back are white, black, and red mangroves, along with some other species mixed in, including Brazilian pepper. The home and Australian pine in the very rear are actually on the other side of the canal. Additionally, all the way up to the road in both the open and forested areas are fiddler crab burrows. Large trees are protected. Almost every county has different guidelines and fees for the protected trees. The most common species include oak and pine, but other species, such as the big banyan trees, can also be on lists depending on the county. The preference is to avoid impact entirely. Pruning or trimming must be done by a certified arborist, and there are stiff mitigation fees required if the tree must be killed. For mangroves, there is an exemption that allows homeowners to trim them themselves from 10 feet tall down to six feet tall. If they exceed 10 feet, a certified mangrove arborist must do the trimming. The riparian fringe exemption does have limitations on how much may be trimmed, how many, need of, how many feet of shoreline may be trimmed, and specifically does not allow removal. 
a dock or seawall installation does allow some removal from the footprint of the project, but you can expect about $40,000 in mangrove mitigation to be required for a typical seawall installation. So, at this point, you have three options. You can hide behind the seller's disclosure form in a buyer beware state and plead ignorance of anything to disclose on a parcel. Or you can give up selling real estate and find something else to do. Or you can treat an assessment as you do a home inspection. It's not required, but it's a very, very good idea. The turnaround time is currently about two weeks. I can usually get the site visit done sooner and notify you of anything that should or could impact an offer. Please contact me with questions or survey requests. The best way to send a request is through email. And you can also include your name and phone number, the person requesting the survey, either the buyer or the seller, the address, parcel ID, or street lock and block number, depending on what you have available, and the date that you need it by. For uh, sellers, survey this might be the date that you plan to go live listing or on a buyers you've got a certain feasibility period that you've agreed to thank you for your time you have a wonderful day